Hello out there, Internet. Uh, here I am again going through my favorite books, and this time the tailoring ones. Uh, I have quite a few of these, so this will definitely be a two-part uh, series, more or less. But uh, I have my favorite ones with drafts in them to start off with. If you hear the mewing in the background, that is uh, William. He is crying to uh, his stars currently. Uh, who just got fed, so he should be fine in theory, but yeah, uh, he's apparently singing. Anyway, let's start with uh, one of my favorite drafts that you can get your hands on um, pretty easily. It's the Master Designer System um, that I'll have a link in the, the description box below that um, is really pretty awesome. It, it does have a lot of really good drafts in it. Um, I do tend to prefer the 50s version. The 50s version is not as readily available. Um, there are a few spots in it that were fixed in the 50s version, but the 50s version also doesn't have quite as many and varied of coats in it. Um, probably because of moving on to like knitwear and so forth, but um, it is pretty fantastic. Uh, it's if you have a Taylor Square and in general know how to draft things, these ones are quite accurate. Um, the arm thighs are the hardest part, um, if I may say so myself. They, they do more or less do the whole, and then you draw in your arm thigh, <laughs> uh, which works best with a mock-up, but what doesn't really. Um, but as far as everything else, it seems to fit bodies quite well, quite quickly and is readily available online, which is nice. Um, of course, William is, is making his appearance for tonight. Um, <laughs> very, he's had all day to have attention. Um, the 50s version is um, a little bit shorter. Uh, it's a lot harder to find. Uh, if you're trying to get an actual extant book of Master Designer, you'll have to keep an eye out for it. Uh, they are very difficult to get your hands on, and usually when you do, uh, they are very expensive, uh, which is unfortunate because it's one of my favorite drafts. Uh, it, it, it goes by number rather than by um, letters, and so, you know, not that they ever get interrupted in the middle of a draft, oh no, but, you know, in the, the chance that that could possibly happen, right? Um, <laughs> you can find pretty easily where you were last, um, and it's a little bit easier to see, okay, this is, you know, is this an, you know, a double I, or is this a H, or is this, you know, like, is this an uppercased I? But you don't have to deal with much of that at all. It has, like, I think all of three letters in it, and those are for bits that you can more or less ignore. Um, and it's all in numerical order, so you go from one to two is the first step, and you know from two to three is the second step, and all that jazz, more or less. Um, so it, it goes in order, which is nice. Uh, as far as other drafts that are fairly difficult to get your hands on, but if you're lucky enough to do so, um, I would highly recommend the Sarter system. Um, it's one of the few systems that going directly into the... Um, fabric for trousers I would trust, um, although even so, like, it's always better to do mock-up, just in general. Um, but Sarver System is actually by a uh, tailor who's still alive and out there and is, in my opinion, probably one of the um, best minds on uh, tailor's drafts and human geometry that is currently living, um, at least as far as I've been able to run into. Uh, he has broken down human geometry, which is, you know, drafting, right, um, into its most basic form and then how to break it off from there. So it it is different than most traditional drafts that you run into. You, you will want to spend some time uh, trying to learn this system if you are used to other systems. So it's, it's not exactly the same, but as far as... Uh, dealing with the modern form and being able to look at, you know, how tailoring has improved in, you know, the last 
hundred years. Uh, as far as the math goes, this is a great place to go. Now, um, he tends to be very busy because, of course, he's uh, an amazing master tailor. Um, and I believe he works at um, uh, St. Louis Light Opera in the summers sometimes, at least the last time I heard. Uh, and he does sell his copies of his book um, that are well worth it if you can get your hands on it. Um, but you kind of have to know a guy, <laughs> and it kind of has to be him, um, from what I understand anyway, or know a person who knows him, um, which is how I got mine. I don't know him directly, uh, but I would highly recommend it if you can uh, scrounge out that source. Um, he was pretty amazing, and um, I'd highly recommend looking into it. All right, so off of things that you can just buy on Amazon, <laughs> this one's actually surprisingly good. Uh, the Modern Tailor and Outfitter Clothier, Volume 1, by uh, A.S. Bridgetland. I'm hoping I'm talking louder this time. I, I, I'm trying. Um, so let me know in the comments. It, it is very hard for me to tell, um, even when editing. So please help me out here. Um, you guys were very nice about it before, so yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, cool thing about this is it is fairly small. Um, it's, it's, uh, but it has a lot in it. Uh, it starts off with your, you know, wonderfully tyrannical, uh, you know, expectations of what to expect and, and um, you know, why uh, you should be using this method and so forth. And it goes into, you know, the sewing as well as um, the drafts. Some of the drafts, they, they do uh, expect you to know the basics, more or less. I mean, it, it, it's supposed to be written for someone who is studying under someone, more or less. Uh, hi, William. Um, and so there are bits that are missing. Like, if you don't know what they mean by on division or whether you should do it on division, um, it's not necessarily going to tell you. Uh, but in general, if you look at it and you're like, wow, these trousers are way too big, then yeah, it's, it's probably on division. So there's a little bit of, thank you, William, I'm sure rubbing on the microphone sounds great to everybody. Um, here, I'll hold you for a bit. What do you think? No? You want the attention of, of YouTube fame? Is that what you want? <laughs> well, I mean, he is cuter than I am, so there's that. Um, come here, little boy. I'll give you a ginge. All right. So, um... Yeah, so it has drafts in here that are pretty good. Um, I would say that you know, having some experience with this is better. <laughs> Although if you run into stuff in here that you're like, oh, what does this mean? I mean, feel free to ping me. Like I love getting my brain kicked. So um, it, it's like a lot of other tailoring systems that once you know the the few things that are holding you back as far as what they're meaning by stuff. Um, you'll do fine. It also has um, a really lovely 20s women's wear draft section, as well as how to fix um, basically what different wrinkles mean, right? Um, which is something that I'll be going over in some detail in another video, probably. Um, but this is really quite good. It's, it's a, great, um, uh, a great extra book to have, um, and it's kind of fun to play with the drafts, um, and as you can see, it's, it's, it's fairly 20s. Um, if you're starting off with drafting, I would say, and you want to do 20s menswear, get the 20s master designer first, though, I would, I would say. That, that one, um, they, they still have some steps in it that are um, not the most intuitive until you know what they're talking about, um, but um, it's, it's, you know, this, this is still, it, it has some really lovely informative shapes in it, and this one actually goes over like, well, you should make your pockets like this, or you should do this like that, um, whereas the Master Designer books are much more of the, and then you make the coat, <laughs> which um, is definitely, um, uh, you're expected to know that from, from there. Um, so anyway, that's that book. Uh, this is another one that you can just find on, on uh, Amazon. It's the Workman's Guide to Tailoring Stitches and Techniques. It is tiny. It is very, very thin. Um, and it's not a whole lot that you otherwise wouldn't see from any other basic sewing guide, I think. It does go over, like, a tailor symbol. <laughs> and, um, you know, tailor's tacks and 
a lot of, you know, how we name uh, different stitches slightly differently than um, for women's wear, but a lot of this is going to look very familiar if you do any sewing at all. Um, but if not, like if you want a basic primer of why do tailors call things that, what do they mean by, you know, a felon stitch, uh, this is a great place to start. It, it's basic and cheap, uh, if I recall correctly anyway, but um, yeah, it, but if you have some experience, I would say that this is not necessarily the, um, the best book to get. Um, certainly not on, on your top five, let's say. Um, but still, it's still a nice, you know, book. All right, so let's go on to standard work on cutting men's garments in 1886. So um, this is a pretty wonderful book in a lot of ways. Um, it is not a beginner-friendly book. It is not remotely a beginner-friendly book. Um, it is one of the few drafts that you run into where it does use a kind of radial drafting to do it, more or less, where um, it's using your Taylor Square um, to do a lot of the draft. It is not uh, the most accurate thing known to man. There's a lot of, and then you fix it once you have it actually on the person, uh, which is I mean, that's fairly normal too, but as far as pattern shapes go, they're really lovely research and it is really fun to kind of go through and be like, really, that's, those are all of the points they gave you? We. Oui. <laughs> I mean, you could still end up with a full draft from this one. This one's not a, a oh no, they, they left you at the last possible thing, um, but um, you know, it, it has a nice variety of stuff in here. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, if this is your first drafting book, don't get this as your first drafting book. <laughs> if you're interested specifically in 1886, um, then yeah, this is great. This is very informative. You get some all sorts of cool little details like the, the whole jogged um, uh, vent in the back that uh, depending on the style and who you're you know, designing it for, um, it, it could be either hidden or exposed like this, which is, it's, it's a cool period detail. Like it, it, it's just neat. Um, and, and the shapes in it with the whole, you know, curved fiddle back is, is really quite pretty. Um, and the curved fronts are, are really interesting too. Um, but yeah, no, not a beginner's draft. Um, still very thin and oh, packs a lot of punch for, um, you know, how, how little it is. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very fun book to, to go through and play with. Um, this was a massive disappointment, so, <laughs> um, it, but only because I thought it was something that it wasn't, right? I bought this thinking that this was the full 50s version of the Master Designer. Uh, it, it's not. <laughs> um, it is part of the Master Designer. It's part of the 50s version of Master Designer, and if I recall correctly, I bought it from a retailer online. I think it may be, even be the one that sells the, the 20s version of it, um, but this is the part that goes into more of the, the making of it, right? Um, but as far as the making of it guide, it is informative and it's interesting, but it's certainly not comprehensive. Um, if you start at the beginning and you want a suit by the end of it, no. <laughs> It'll get you pretty close, like you have a bunch of different opinions on it, but it also starts with the idea that um, these are my opinions of the, like, I agree with how to do the, the cuffs, right? Um, I love the how they demonstrate, oh, where'd it go? I just saw it. Um, how they demonstrate how to sew in and baste in the wig in, right? Um, Non-fusible, lovely cuffs, right? Um, but it's not um, the be all end all. And like any other tailoring thing, um, basically this is writing down the stuff that they remembered to think to tell you of the things that may differ from the crappier versions of what you might have been taught. Oh no. Um, it's still good to have. Like, I still like it. It's still um, useful for doing the whole, okay, so I, I don't have the time to explain this right now, but here, read this. <laughs> this section right here. Um, and it does have some really nice diagrams, as you can see, that um, pretty clearly explain some of the stuff, considering that they're just drawn. They're not um, like actual pictures of actual things. Um, it's, you know, it's a really nice thing to have as an educator. Um, and if you are, you know, 
trying to cross-reference, you know, so how would this be done if this was done really well? Um, there are lots and lots of opinions out there uh, on how to build menswear. Um, I've yet to run into two tailors that had exactly the same opinion on this is how you make a coat. Uh, it's, it's just not the way that it works. So uh, it is really interesting so that you can make informed decisions on how you're building stuff to look at how other people have done it. Um, and as always, if you're working for a master tailor, do, do it their way. Like <laughs> they, that, is, that is definitely something that um, uh, if they're employing you or you are working for them, learn their way because I guarantee that is the best possible experience you could have. Uh, to be able to learn from, you know, who cares if you learned a slightly different way somewhere else, right? Like, um, I learned to put, uh, like, from, well, we'll get into that in a minute. I, I will save that rant for another time. Uh, here's another one that if you're into, um, like, doing runs of clothes, so if you're doing off-the-rack kind of menswear and want something for how to grade it, um, this is not a bad start for that. Um, I personally prefer, uh, you know, doing more uh, drafting from scratch. Uh, just that's what I'm most comfortable in and what I got trained the most in. Uh, but as far as an interesting and very very light thing, reading and a short explanation of how you get from point A to point B, this is not bad. Uh, is it perfect? No, because no grading is ever perfect. Um, it, people are too complicated to be able to. Uh, you know, grade up and grade down exactly from any size. Um, the closer to how you drafted it exactly to their measurements you are, the better you are you off, um, of course. But you, if you're doing a, a ready-to-wear line, and you're like, okay, so I know I need to, to you know, <laughs> um, grade things out, and let's say you don't have the 1920s master designer, you know, these sizes are for, you know, this height, this weight, this size, this weight, um, for, you know, this height, this chest measurement. Um, if you don't have those charts, this is pretty good too. Like, this is, if you want to learn grading, this is not a bad place to start. Um, as far as men's wears, men's wear goes. Uh, Alright, so, this one's... This one's another fun historical one. So this one is another like weird Amazon, no pictures provided sort of thing. Um, the popular gentleman system for cutting and designing men's garments. Um, it's, it's quite the epic uh, title and it is you know, a very lightweight uh, paperback book and it is full of drafts. Um, and they are not the most intuitive drafts known to man, uh, but they're fun to fiddle with, and they have some interesting and you know beautiful sweeping uh, lines to them, and um, it's you know uh, still a fun draft to have. Uh, it's not uh, my favorite draft known to man, and um, uh, this one is if you're interested in in the teens, nineteen teens. So this was nineteen seventeen. Hold on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this was, yeah, yeah, okay, 1917-ish. Um, this would be more or less nice shapes for that, which is one of the reasons why these ones look a bit more boxy than like the 20s versions, um, but, you know, not as boxy as the 50s version. Um, you know, uh, King Edward being a thing, like that's... <laughs> Part of the fashion is, is slightly boxier shapes and so forth, um, which is, is interesting research too. Um, once again, probably not a, what I would recommend for a beginner cutter, but, um, but still really informative and interesting. Now let's go on to this Mondo Giant Blue Complete Guide to Practical Cutting 1853. I love this book. I love it for its tirades, for its this is the one true way of possibly ever building things. Um, it is really entertaining. Now, this is not something that, oh, the drafts in here are 
hideous. <laughs> well, they're gorgeous in that they have these beautiful, beautiful curves and so forth, but as far as how much information they give you, um, he very much wants you to go and uh, learn all of this stuff from him, right? Like, this is definitely written by a guy who either assumes that you know exactly what you're doing, but should buy this book anyway, um, but, you know, need the updated version of what fashion is, or wants to convince you that this is an impossible task that you cannot possibly uh, do by yourself, so therefore you should just hire a professional to do it, or um, that it's just, oh, oh, they're, or he was worried about someone stealing it, perhaps. Uh, there are all sorts of bits in here that are not there. <laughs> and if you don't have other, uh, you know, rock of eye experience of being able to go in and be like, all right, that's more or less what the draft looks like this, I'll draw the line there and fix it in the mock-up and see how that goes. Um, this is, oh, oh, do not try this if you are faint of heart. Um, if you are looking for an adventure and really are interested in, you know, the 1850s, yeah, totally buy this book. This is hilarious. The uh, copy text in it is really, really very fun. Um, and the, the extreme in the curved elbows and the curved fronts and the barrel chestedness of it is really quite delightful. Um, it is also a honking book. <laughs> um, this would definitely, you know, cause some damage if you dropped it on your foot. Um, it is, uh, it is a lot of fun. But if you're looking for something that, you know, you're starting out and you want to not be intimidated by tailoring and you want to, you know, dive into it and do cool, you know, historical drafts, no, not this one. Don't, don't do this one until you have at least three jackets under your, your, um, yeah, under your belt. Like, no, just, just don't. Um, it, it is it was just asking for tears. Um, but super entertaining it, it, as far as, you know, if, if you want a, a fun book and are experienced enough for it. All right, so now back to beginnings. All right, if you have taken a tailoring class, most likely you've had this as your textbook, the classical tailoring techniques. And it's, I mean, some, it's fantastic. It's, if you start at the beginning, and go through to the end, and you follow it step by step, you will end up with a nice quality coat. Um, there are some things that I disagree with it, but of course there are. Like, every tailor has different opinions, right? Um, but it's a fantastic step by step guide. It's all in black and white, and the pictures are like from the 70s, probably. Like, it's, it's old school. Um, but it's lightweight, it's not terribly expensive for the wonderful guide that it is. Um, and especially since you can literally start at the beginning and go to the end and end up with an actual finished garment that looks good and will last for years, that's a wonderful thing, right? This is a fantastic book for this. Um, I highly recommend it if you're going to get, um, if you're going to just buy a pattern um, and then build a jacket, build it with this, these directions. Don't. Don't build it with whatever crap instructions were given for, you know, fusing, whatever. I have opinions on fusing. I mean, it's fine. It's fine if you are building something that it doesn't have to last very long, or it doesn't have to go in a hot car, or, you know, you just need to get it done, get it out the door, and meet a price point, and so forth. That's, that's okay, fine, right? You do what you gotta do to get stuff done. And I've certainly used fusing before. I know, you know, that that's confessions in a dark closet here. Um, don't tell some of the tailors that I've worked for that I've touched fusing. Um, although, uh, as fair warning, one of the reasons why um, I am so vehemently, like, don't follow directions to, to learn fusing, unless you want to go into fashion. Like, fashion, that's totally legit. Um, but um, I have literally heard of uh, one of the poor guys that interviewed before me for a job. Um, got kicked out in an hour and instead of the whole day-long sewing quiz, more or less, um, because he had never worked with non-fusible before. And he, the tailor, the master tailor that was there is vehemently against fusible. And honestly, like, I don't like mixing that. I don't like worrying about if I'm going to press this, you know, thousand dollar jacket and end up with 
fusible stuck on the back because someone used fusible on what should be a clean table. Um, ugh, ugh. Um, I like glue in its own specific spot, but I also have weird hang-ups about getting sticky. So there's a reason why I'm not, I, I've done some specialty costuming, but that is not my favorite. It's, it's just not. Um, dealing with all the glue and being sticky and so forth, there are people who are really, really amazing at it, and it's really amazing and fun to watch them work. It's not my favorite thing. Um, I can, I just don't like it. Um, so, Anyway, so that's my rant on fusing. Um, you're not going to find a lot of fusing here. <laughs> this is all old school. You're going to bequeath this suit down to your grandchildren or put it on Broadway for the next 50 years. This will make a suit that will do that, um, which is fantastic, right? It'll look like a million bucks, partially because the work that goes into it is intensive. It is absolutely intensive. Um, but it makes such beautiful, beautiful work. Um, so here, actually, uh, has one of the diagrams of one of the few places that I completely disagree with. Um, and, I mean, I learned this the original way, too. Like, this was, this was my starting book as well. Um, but as far as, um, you see this tailor's tape that goes to here? If, you, if you're unfamiliar, you can feel free to skip this section in this particular rant. But um, the tailor's tape that goes all the way up and into the lapel here. But you see all that pad stitching there? I mean, that's holding that quite well there. That That's going to create a really lovely, um, more or less, two fabrics formed into this beautiful one fabric, right? You don't really need the tailor's tape in there. You can end it just a little bit above uh, where your last buttonhole is so that you have a nice smooth transition and you can you know ease it up into the, the plastron um, and so forth. But if you leave out the tailor's tape in the lapel, you get that really thin, really beautiful, crispy edge on the edge of your, you know, beautifully clapped and and um, finished um, you know, lapel. Uh, and having seen that done, I, I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, this also has really good information about fit. Um, some of the drawings are not the most um, informative, I think. Um, they, after you know what you're looking at, since they are drawings instead of pictures, I have a hard time, or did, had a hard time visualizing, like what do those wrinkles mean, the way that they're drawn. Um, it is, you know, do not fear, much easier to see in person. Um, and so hopefully, I, I put a bunch of pictures in for another video that I'm working on um, that should work out pretty well for explaining that. The same sort of ideas, um, although I think I, organized it completely differently, but, you know, whatever. Um, they're not parallel structure whatsoever, but um, it's, it's a really good book. It has, it's dense with information, and it's wonderful in that it'll, it'll get you there, right? Um, and most books don't. <laughs> um, I highly recommend it. If you're going to get two tailoring books, this and Master Designer will end up with a beautiful, beautiful coat, right? Um, yes, okay. So, uh, a bunch of you probably have this one. It's a really common, um, lovely book. It's had a lot of editions, and for good reason. Um, vintage couture tailoring, uh, it's really, it's really beautiful. Like, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And explains it in wonderful, in-depth, step-by-step detail. And it does cover a lot of the fusible stuff that uh, I won't get too far into, nor rant too much on. Um, that uh, covers a lot of the things that you can get into some really beautiful details. Now, a lot of the, the techniques in here, I think you'd be better served going and finding the YouTube videos of, but until you know what they're called, being able to search and find um, good explanations and uh, having the vocabulary to be able to know what you don't know, uh, this is fantastic for this, and it's just really pretty. I'm just saying, like, is that not droolable? Uh, if, if nothing else, get this book to drool over. It's really gorgeous, um, and the techniques in it are really, are really solid. Um, yeah, <laughs> even if it does use some fusible <gasps> gasp. Um, all right, so as far as the specialty one, um, shirt making workbook, it's, it's really nice as far as um, the, the, details of going into making a shirt. Uh, 
Now, that being said, it is it is kind of marketed towards uh, here. Let's make every shirt for yourself you possibly ever could in kind of weird and wonderful ways. Um, and so it tries to cover a lot in it, and it does. Like this is a lot to cover in a very small book. Um, they do a lot of these little dickies, which are really cute. Um, as far as a fast way to like show off all of these different kinds of collars that you can make and um, how to attach them and it, it, it's nice. It's, it goes over um, all of the fine details that when making your first shirt you'd be like, oh, oh no, why didn't that fell, you know, full flat felled or flat felled seam work out the way that I wanted it to because it didn't you know, like go into the bit that I wanted it to and now I have to figure out how this junction goes into that junction and yeah. Uh, this takes all of that out. Like that's the wonderful thing about this book is it's just like all right, then you go from this step to that step and this step to that step, and then you know you'll end up with a, book, a shirt that looks like you bought it, right? Um, which I mean, yeah. <laughs> and if you really like making shirts, this is this is great. Like it goes over some of the the details of you know full flat felds, flat felds, and the pluses and minuses of both. Um, I'd recommend it. There's also a uh, tape. Uh, a trouser book that I have currently lent out um, that I'll link to in, well not link to, but I'll have the, the um, title and so forth in ISBN for you to find down below that's very similar but for trousers and boy is that thing really pretty. Um, it has so many cool flies in it that you really should check it out. Um, the, the different styles of flies in it are fantastic um, and it's it's really pretty. It's got really, really pretty pictures in it, and there are all sorts of different styles in it that you wouldn't necessarily think of unless you see it. So if you are bored doing yet another fly, um, or if you just are intimidated of, uh, oh no, not a fly. How do I do a fly? Um, it'll walk you through it. It's, it it'll uh, walk you through like the shortest possible way, the, the slightly better way, the the really perfect way, the um, eccentric sort of ways. Lots of different eccentric sort of ways, and it's, it's fantastic. You should check it out. Um, all right, so if you're looking at another drafting system as far as I want to start from scratch, um, this is it, right? Um, if you're not going to get Master Designer or you want to start with a draft that has a very simple arm side to follow and one of the best arm sides I've ever, I've ever seen, this one, this one, absolutely this one. Um, it is very 70s, um, so any of the styles that you're doing, if you're not making 70s, you can adapt these with the research of your other books to do all sorts of other things. But it it has a lot of good information in it. And the drafts in it are solid. Um, and as I said, like the arms I is in it, they aren't going to just leave you punted off the end of a building of, here we go. All right, check out, check out this arms eye. Is that not a lot of beautiful points? Like, is it going to be perfect the first time? Probably not, because arms eyes are complicated, and people are complicated, and three-dimensional beings, and that's one of the parts that, if it doesn't fit right, it's it's rough, right? Um, but if you have all of your measurements right, and you're doing your block, this is fantastic. Like, this is the closest to perfect arms eye your first try without having to be able to look at it and go, uh, there. Um, which is fantastic, right? It's, it's great step-by-step. -step. Um, the drafts themselves are alphabetical. I, um, I prefer numerical. Um, but, I mean, honestly, they're simple enough that um, even if you're starting out, you will totally get these. Uh, and it's great. It's great like that. And it will get you all the way to the end of the draft. They have the collars in there. They have the, the sleeves in there. It is a complete book. Um, and it's fairly lightweight and thin. And it's a good workbook to be able to walk your way through lots of interesting cuts. Um, if you want a good bell-bottom draft, this has a good bell-bottom draft. If you can imagine, it's the 70s. It does have straight legs as well in there. And it has more conservative designs, designs as well as, um, you know, more out there and funky and... Uh, fashionable designs for the 70s um, and it's you know got different collar points and so forth so it's it's really quite lovely um, I would highly recommend it um, between this and Master Designer I mean pick your poison um, as far as that goes um, and if you don't have an aversion to letters as much as I do this might be the one for you um, especially if you don't want to have to um, figure your arm size as much by yourself um, 
also it has a different variety of things. So if you are getting into, I'm going to draft all the stuff. I want to make a fantastic wardrobe with all of the amazing different kinds of coats that you possibly ever could build. Uh, get both. Like, honestly. They're not that expensive, considering if you're going to be using them over and over again as, as, as books that you draft from regularly, you can get these secondhand for pretty cheap. Um, and they're really wonderful, so I would highly recommend it. Um, all right, so this is a little bit closer to what you would have for your women's wear, right? Um, you'll probably also see this in some of the, the, the more historical women's wear stuff. But as far as a great guide to uh, Tudor era um, drafting and so forth, these are much more similar to Janet Arnold instead of you know plugging in your numbers and following the draft and ending up with something that will um, match your body exactly. These drafts are, well, these aren't so much drafts as they are patterns, right? Um, but they're to scale, and you can scale them up, and they're a, it's a wonderful resource. They do walk you through a lot of the history of it, as well as the making of it, um, and uh, you know, good timelines and so forth. And it's really, it's, it's a lovely book. It's beautiful. Um, I would highly recommend it if you are interested in this area at all, um, or just want to have a slightly broader view than just you know, Victorian and 20th century menswear. Um, this is a good addition to it. Uh, anyway, that's it for the um, first installment of uh, my menswear stuff. I hope this the sound quality of it was slightly better. Um, I am trying to speak louder. Let me know if it was moderately successful or not. Um, and uh, I will get more for you the next time around. And I hope that was enjoyable.